Stand together. This is a day that the Lord hath made. I will. I will. This is a day that the Lord hath made. I will. You know what rejoice means? It means to do your joy again. Rejoice. 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 So let's redo our joy. Let's give him some good, great, hearty praise right now. In the name of Jesus. I love you. I love you. I love you, Lord. such a special way and yes I praise you I lift you up I magnify your name that's why my heart is filled with praise I love you yes I love you Jesus I love you I love you, Lord, today. Oh, because you care. Because you care for me. In such a special way. In such a special way. And yes, I praise you. I lift you up. I magnify your name. That's why my heart is filled with praise. Jesus, we love you so much this morning. Hallelujah, we love you, Jesus. Aren't you thankful that when you love him, you know that he already loves you? Amen. Could we just love him? I love you, Jesus. You're wonderful. Just tell him that I love you, Jesus. You're so good. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Uh, I wanted to uh, just welcome all of our guests. As I was walking around, um, visiting some folks, uh, there's a number of new people here today, and uh, I'm delighted that you came, and uh, we hope you're having a beautiful experience. Tony, just before our preacher preaches here today, and he's going to really wow you, this, if you weren't here at our youth extravaganza, or what do we call riot. it, youth riot, uh, this brother is going <laughs> to knock your socks off and uh, he did a fabulous job and um, we'll introduce him in just a minute but I wanted to share just a couple things that will be an enhancement to your life if you want to partake of it I want to take us to John chapter 3 verse 4 The Bible says here, Nicodemus saith unto him, How can a man be born when he is old? Can he enter into the second time into his mother's womb and be born? Jesus answered this, Verily, verily, I say unto thee, except a man be born of the water and of the Spirit, he cannot enter into the kingdom of God. The water and the Spirit. Right. Somebody tell me what the water is. Baptism. Baptism. And what's the Spirit part? Baptism of the Holy Spirit. John chapter 7 and verse 38, it says, In the last days, a great day of the feast, Jesus stood and cried, saying, If any man thirst, let him come unto me and drink. The point of that was they were in a, a feast for seven days days and he's saying to them after all of this and you're still not satisfied come to me I've got something that will truly satisfy he's saying to them 
if you have that emptiness in you and the, that, that dissatisfaction with life and you're wanting something meaningful, he's saying, after you've done all you've done, now come to where I am and I will give you living water. He'll give you life and life eternal a beautiful experience in verse 38 he said he that believeth on me as the scripture hath said out of his belly or innermost being he shall flow rivers of living water also about baptism he says that in mark chapter 6 verse 16 he that believeth and is baptized shall be saved but he that believeth not shall be damned and so we see this water spirit we see this baptism in this very short little bible study and we see refreshment and anointing and fulfilling in what jesus has to give it's not just a religion it's all about a relationship we don't consider to be re ourselves to be to be religious people. We're people of faith and people of a relationship, and we would like to help anybody that's hungry for refreshing and help and filling and getting the other part that you need. The Bible says that we are made complete in Him. And if you're not in him, you're not complete. Something is missing. And when you get born again, filled with the Spirit, the other half, the connection with God, makes you a whole being. Isn't that amazing? And that's why people are so miserable and hungry for sin, trying to find something meaningful. And they can't. And they go from one thing to the next, to the next, to the next, and they're miserable and empty. Can I get an amen? Do you, be, do you know people where you work are just miserable people? And God can fill that emptiness, and you'll be complete in Him. At the end of the service and the preaching, we're going to have our prayer partners around the front, and... Uh, special needs you'd like for prayer you have family problems you have difficulties things that you would personally like somebody to pray with you you can come to one of these people if you're interested in being filled with the spirit if they can help you with that and uh, enjoy the rest of this service we love you thanks for coming amen Praise the Lord. There is no failure in our God. Amen? Amen. Things of this world and even people, they can let you down. However, there is no failure in God. The enemy may try and trick you to think, well, oh my goodness, God, how could this have happened? How could you let this happen? But you know, God in his word says that he is able to make work all things together for good to them that love him who are called according to his purpose is that God is able to make the bad turn into good and that he's able to orchestrate things according to his will that it's not that bad things happen so that he can beat us up but rather to make us stronger the opportunity and getting to know him for who he is amen and so as we sing this this morning, we invite you to worship God along with us. Receive. 
Can we do that for about 30 more seconds? Just give God the praise he's worthy of. All throughout this place, there's testimonies that show God has not failed you. Can you just give God praise that's worthy of that? He has not failed you. He hasn't let you go. He's been there for you. Hallelujah. We lift you up, Jesus. We thank you, Lord God. We thank you, Jesus. Hallelujah. Amen. He's a great God, isn't he? Amen. Before you're seated, look at the person next to you and say, He will not fail you. Amen. You can be seated this morning. Amen. I'm very excited about the preacher this morning who's going to come and minister to us. We just, as Pastor told you a little while ago, we just had him for our youth convention, our youth riot. And he preached not just good messages, but words from God. If you were here, you're a witness of that. And uh, it was amazing just seeing how God ministered to the the young people and young adults of our district and even to anybody that's just in the room. And I believe that he's going to have a word of God for us this morning. This is a, an awesome man of God and his wife, Sir Tanya Weidman. So glad that she's here with him. And they are from Atlanta, Georgia. And it's my privilege and honor to bring to this pulpit this morning to Christian Life Center family, Brother Myron Weidman. Would you just give the Lord some praise and just open yourself up to what God wants to do this morning? Let's thank God for what he's about to do as we welcome Brother Weidman. Let's all stand. Let's lift our hands to the Lord for a few moments. Let's worship him for a few moments before we get into the word of the Lord, if that's okay. All across the sanctuary this morning, hands are lifted. Matter of fact, if it's appropriate, you can just put your hand on your neighbor if it's appropriate. Just pray for them that God would touch them as well. We're not going to be selfish today. God, yes, I want you to touch me, but I want you to touch everybody that's connected to me. I want you to touch my neighbor, I want you to touch my husband, my wife, my son, my daughter, my co-worker, my friend. I mean, I even know what their name is, but touch them because they're here in your presence, God. Come on, that's it. Open your mouth and pray. Pray for your neighbor like you're praying for yourself. Pray for them just as hard as you would pray for your own flesh and blood. Hallelujah, hallelujah, hallelujah. Come on, that's it. That sounds beautiful. Just a few more seconds and we're going to open up the word of God. Well, let's continue to set an atmosphere that's conducive for him to come down and to have his way in our midst today. We love you, Jesus. We honor you, God. We glorify you, God. We don't deserve your goodness. We don't deserve your mercy, God, but I'm thankful. I'm thankful for your new mercies every morning, God. It's because of your new mercies that I'm not consumed all the days of my life, God. Hallelujah. Don't ever let me forget, God. Don't ever let me forget, God, that I'm here because of you. I need you, God. I need you. Not only do I need you, but I want you in my life. I want you in my family, God. I want you in my decisions. I want you in my heart, God. I want you, God. I want you. Does anybody want him in this house today? Does anybody want him? I say, does anybody want him in this house today? He's not going to force himself upon anybody. You have to want him. He is a rewarder of them that diligently seek him. We love you, Jesus. We love you. We give you glory. We give you honor in this house today. So good to be in the house of the Lord today. How many people are glad to be in the house of the Lord? And not only in the house of the Lord, but in the very presence of the Lord. A lot of people go to church. Not everybody gets into the presence of the Lord. Amen. It's good to be in the presence of the Lord today. So good to be here at CLC. Amen. The Bible instructs us to give double honor. To the elders who rule well among us and i want to do just that i want to give double honor to your leadership bishop Ron libby and pastor sean libby let's give god a praise for them come on you can do better than that come on you can do better than that come on these are your pastors these are your teachers your leaders your feeders your watchmen on the wall you can do better than that amen 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 we love we honor we respect the Libby's family, the Libby family, these awesome men of God, and their wives. We love and appreciate them. Thank you, Bishop Ron Libby and Pastor Sean Libby, for the opportunity to stand behind this pulpit this weekend. I do not lightly esteem this opportunity or take it for granted, but I am honored, humbled, and appreciative to have this opportunity to preach the engrafted word of God at this wonderful church. Amen. With you wonderful people. Also, brother and sister Glass, let's give it up for them. They're doing such an awesome job. Come on, let's give God praise for them did such a great job with the youth riot this weekend amen we love and appreciate them as well they've been so kind to my family 
been so kind to my wife and I, and, and the hospitality has been top notch, has been second to none. Thank you, Brother Glass, for the invitation and everything you've done for my family. Amen. This weekend, so good to be here. Glad to have my wife with me. Tonya Wyman, wave your hand. Amen. So glad to have my wife with me. Amen. Amen. So glad to have her. You may see her stand up, sit down, walk out, come back, walk out, come back. She may even put a peppermint or something in her mouth for a little snack or something. She's six and a half months pregnant. Amen. So we're excited about that as well. Amen. Amen. To God be the glory. Amen. Amen. The book of John, chapter 14. The book of John, chapter 14. Let's get into the word of the Lord. Amen. Amen. Also, a special shout out to Sister Leah Matthews. I don't know if she's in the sanctuary right now. I don't see her anywhere in the sanctuary, but I've known Sister Leah for probably over a decade now. She's a good friend of our church and our family. Amen. It's good to be with her. So John chapter 14, verse 1. We're going to consider a few verses and I'll let you be seated. John chapter 14, verse 1. When you have it, say amen. The Bible says, let not your heart be troubled. Ye believe in God, believe also in me. In my Father's house are many mansions. If it were not so, I would have told you. I go to prepare a place for you, and if I go and prepare a place for you, I will come again and receive you unto myself, that where I am, there ye may be also. And whither I go, ye know, and the way ye know. Thomas said unto him, Lord, we know not whither thou goest, and how can we know the way? Jesus saith unto him, I am the way, the truth, and the life. No man cometh unto the Father but by me. I'm at verse 7. If ye had known me, ye should have known my Father also. And from henceforth ye know him and have seen him. Philip saith unto him, Lord, show us the Father, and it sufficeth us. It satisfies us. Verse 9. Jesus saith unto him, Have I been so long time with you? And yet hast thou not known me, Philip? He that have seen me hath seen the Father. And how sayest thou then, show us the Father? Believest thou not that I am in the Father, and the Father in me? The words that I speak unto you, I speak not of myself. But the Father that dwelleth in me, he doeth the works. Verse 11, believe me that I am in the Father, and the Father in me, or else believe me for the very work's sake. I want to read verse 11 of John chapter 14 one more time but from the NIV, the New International Version Bible. The Bible says believe me when I say that I am in the Father and the Father is in me or at least believe on the evidence. Everybody shout evidence. Let the church shout evidence. Evidence of the miracles themselves. Can we say amen to the reading of the word? Amen. For a few moments until you're hearing of this Sunday morning, I simply want to preach and use this as my subject. Where is the evidence? Where is the evidence? You can be seated in the presence of the Lord. Somebody shout, where is the evidence? In our text, John chapter 14. We find Jesus having a consolatory discourse with his disciples. We have to look at the previous chapter, John chapter 13, to quickly find the context of why Jesus is now having to console and to comfort his disciples. In John 13, while partaking of the Last Supper, Jesus announced to them that he had to go away and that they could not come with him. He then tells them that the one who would betray him was sitting in that very room. So that's where our text picks up in John 14 where the disciples are scared. They are anxious and a little unnerved. So Jesus tells them things such as, let not your heart be troubled. Ye believe in God, believe also in me. In my Father's house are many mansions. If it were not so, I would have told you. I go to prepare a place for you. And if I go and prepare a place for you, I'm coming back again to receive you unto myself. That where I am, you may be also. And where I go, he told them, you know and you know 
the way to get there. But then Thomas interrupts Jesus. And he says unto him, Lord, we don't know where you're going, and how can we know the way? Jesus replied unto him, I am the way, the truth, and the life. Let me inject this before I move forward. It was Buddha that said he knows the way. It was Muhammad that said he found the way. But Jesus said, I am the way, the truth, and the life. No man comes to the Father except through me. Jesus goes on to say, if you had known me, you should have known my Father also. And from henceforth, you know him and have seen him. Philip then asked the critical question in John chapter 14, verse 8. Lord, show us the Father, and it sufficeth us. Philip, he was not speaking out of turn. He just wanted to know where is the evidence that we have seen the Father? Jesus replied, have I been so long time with you, and yet you still don't know who I am, Philip? He that have seen me have seen the Father. And how can you now say, show us the Father. You don't believe that I am in the Father and the Father in me? He said, the words that I speak unto you, I speak not of myself. But the Father that dwelleth in me, he doeth the works. Believe me when I say that I am in the Father and the Father is in me. Or at least believe on the evidence of the miracles themselves. He was telling them uh, that there was not another person to look for. He was telling them uh, that I am God the Father. I am Jesus the Son and soon to be the Holy Ghost uh, after I ascend and pour out my spirit uh, on the day of Pentecost. Jesus, he was telling them that they had not only been walking uh, with humanity, but they had also been walking uh, with divinity. Jesus then went on to say, he said, if that's not enough evidence to make you believe in me, he says, then the evidence of my miracles ought to be enough. You got to understand, as I'm building my case early here today, you have to understand, unbeknown to them, they had been journeying with the God-man. Yeah, they had been journeying with the God man. What are you saying, preacher? Jesus, he had the body of a man, but yet he still had the power of God. Let me say that again. He had the body of a man, but yet he still had the power of God. Let me see if I can connect the dots. Jesus, ladies and gentlemen, he was man enough to be born of a woman, but yet he was God enough enough to create the mother that he was born from just stick with me I'm just building my case Jesus uh, he was man enough uh, to drink his mother's milk but yet he was God enough uh, to produce the milk inside of his own mom I'm just talking about Jesus today uh, he was man enough y'all uh, to thirst for water but yet he was God enough uh, to walk on water I'm just talking about Jesus uh, he was man enough to get hungry uh, but he was God enough to feed 5,000 with just two fish and five loaves of bread. He was man enough to pray, but yet he was God enough to answer his own prayers. He was man, y'all know who I'm talking about in here today? He was man enough to be late to his friend's funeral, but yet he was God enough to say, I may not come when you want me to come, but I'm always on time. Lazarus, come forth. He was man enough to get tired, but yet he he was God enough to never sleep uh, nor slumber. He was man enough uh, to cry and shed tears, uh, but yet he's God enough uh, to wipe away every tear from your eye. Uh, he was man enough to bleed sometimes, uh, but yet he was God enough uh, to kill the woman who had the issue of blood uh, for 12 long years. Uh, he was man enough to die on a cross, uh, but yet he was God enough uh, after three days to resurrect his own body. Uh, and, co and come back from the grave uh, and say I got all power in heaven and in earth his name is Jesus 
his name is Jesus. That uh, was enough evidence to show uh, that he was the almighty God walking uh, on earth as the express image uh, of God. First Timothy chapter 3 verse 16 says, uh, and without controversy, uh, great is the mystery of godliness. Uh, God was manifest in the flesh. Uh, he was justified in the spirit. Uh, he was seen of angels, priests unto the Gentiles, uh, believed on in the world and received up unto glory. Uh, there is only one God uh, and his name is Jesus. Uh, I don't care what you heard. Uh, there's not two gods. Uh, there's not three gods. Uh, and Benny Hinn said there's seven God. The devil is a liar. There's only one God. Uh, Y'all starting to scare me. I said, there's only one God, and his name is Jesus. His name is Jesus. If I'm not mistaken, I think it's Matthew uh, chapter 1, verse 21. If I'm not mistaken, the Bible says, uh, and she shall bring forth a son, uh, and his name shall be called uh, Jesus. There it is. His name uh, shall be called Jesus, for he shall save uh, his people from their sins. Everybody shout Jesus. Jesus. His name shall be called uh, Jesus. Now, my name is Myron Weidman Jr. My name is Myron Weidman Jr. because uh, when I was born, there was already a Myron Weidman here. So I was given Jr. as a suffix. We have a four year old son back home in Atlanta. His name is Myron, we kept it going, Weidman the third. He was given third as a suffix uh, because before he came, there was already a Myron Wadman Jr. and a Myron Wadman Sr. here. But his name shall be called Jesus, not Jesus Jr. Not Jesus the third. Because there was nobody before him. I feel like preaching apostolic today. And there's nobody coming after him. He's gone all by himself. He looked to the left. He looked to the right and said, I can't find nobody. I'll swear by myself. I'm God and I'm God alone. Now, now growing up, also growing up in my home back home, uh, growing up as a young boy, folks, uh, they would call the house and they would, they would say, can I please speak uh, to Myron? Can I please speak to Myron? Uh, and if my mother answered the phone, uh, she would say, Myron who? Because there's more than one Myron that live in this house. Which one do you want? I don't know about you, but I've never prayed to heaven and said, Jesus! And then heard a voice say, which one? You want the Father? You want the Son? You want the Holy Ghost? But when I say Jesus, I get the Father. I feel like preaching in this house today. Uh, I get the Son. Uh, I get the Holy Ghost. Uh, I get all three in one. Uh, somebody just open up your mouth. Uh, throw your head back. Uh, raise your hands and say, Jesus! Be seated, please. Be seated, please. Be seated, please. I can tell somebody know who I'm talking about. I can tell uh, somebody has an experience. Somebody has a relationship uh, with this man named Jesus. Be seated, please. Be seated, please. So he told his disciples, he said, if I'm not enough evidence, he said, then the works uh, and the miracles that I've done, they should have been enough. Uh, you got to understand, church, that evidence is defined uh, as the available body of facts of information indicating uh, whether a belief is true or valid. Everybody shout evidence. Evidence, it helps people come to a particular conclusion about a thing. The difference of somebody being found guilty of a crime or being acquitted of a crime, it usually comes down to the evidence that has been submitted. Do you have any DNA? 
Do you have any pictures? Do you have any phone records? Do you have any emails? Do you have any text messages? Do you have any evidence? Yeah, it, it really don't matter how you feel about a thing or a person. It, it really don't even matter what you think. Where is uh, the evidence? And for years, people have um, been dissing and disrespecting God uh, in the sense that he does not exist. Uh, skeptics and atheists have been trying to debunk and disprove uh, that Jesus is alive. They say uh, that he was just an ordinary man like any other man uh, who died and stayed dead. They are screaming, uh, if God is, uh, then where is the evidence? Uh, and Jesus is on the edge of his seat. He is waiting he is hoping that somebody uh, will stand up and make his presence visible uh, make his presence known uh, hear me in this house if you have the Holy Ghost uh, you know without a shadow of a doubt uh, that God is not dead uh, but he is alive do I got a witness uh, in this apostolic sanctified church uh, do I got somebody who has the gift of the Holy Ghost uh, the real Holy Ghost uh, with the evidence of speaking in tongues uh, who can say I know God is real uh, because when I received the Holy Ghost uh, out of my belly flowed uh, rivers of living water I felt something all over me uh, I couldn't explain it but I couldn't deny it uh, I felt them in my hands I got a witness in here uh, I felt them in my feet uh, I felt them for all over me I know God is real be seated for a few moments there is a story of a college professor who was an atheist. He taught a class on human development and at the end of the year, he would always conclude by saying, there is no God. He would then ask, does anybody in this class want to stand up and to prove me wrong? He would then proceed to take a piece of chalk, hold it up in the air, he would say, I am dropping this piece of chalk on the ground, and if there is a God, he can stop it from breaking. The professor did this every year, and the chalk broke every year. He did this for 20 years, church, and nobody never said anything until one year. The professor went through his same ritual as he did every year on the last day of class. He shouted, there is no God. He then asked, does anybody dare to prove me wrong? It was silent for about five seconds until a voice arose from the back of the room that said, there is a God. And his name is Jesus. The professor shocked and surprised that after all these years, somebody actually had the nerve, actually had the unmitigated gall to challenge him. He said, stand up, young man, and repeat yourself. The young man stood up this time, and with more fervor in his voice, he shouted, there is a God, and his name is Jesus. The professor now read in the face, said, okay, I will drop this chalk as I do every year and it will break. But if there is a God, he can stop it from breaking. The young man said, challenge, accept it. So uh, he said, drop it this time and see what happens. The professor this year, he nervously took the piece of chalk. Uh, he held it up as high as he could this year. And then he proceeded to drop it. But uh, as he dropped it this time, the chalk slipped out of his hand. It hit the cuff of his shirt uh, and it rolled down his pants onto the ground without breaking yeah the students they all stood up uh, they started cheering they started shouting uh, and that atheist professor he grabbed his briefcase uh, and he ran out of the classroom uh, and the young man came down from the risers uh, and he shared the gospel of Christ uh, with over 300 of his classmates uh, Jesus is waiting on somebody uh, he's waiting on anybody who is unashamed uh, and unapologetic to represent him uh, in this evil and bless 
from his world uh, the world they are laughing at us uh, they are mocking us they are saying where is the evidence uh, and we that have experienced Jesus uh, need to look at every devil uh, look at every atheist uh, look at every skeptic uh, look at every cynic uh, and say you want to see some evidence uh, you're looking at evidence uh, because I am a walking miracle uh, I am a living testimony uh, and I know some of y'all ain't gonna shout with me today uh, because some of y'all are perfect uh, some of y'all never made any mistakes uh, well you just sit there and just look like you in a museum uh, but I'm preaching to some real folk uh, who can say preacher I'm evidence uh, I'm evidence that there must be a God somewhere uh, he took me uh, out of the miry clay he pulled me out of the pit uh, I know there's a God somewhere there's somebody that can testify in this house uh, and say preacher if it had not been for the Lord uh, who was on my side uh, I wouldn't be in this house today I talked about it on Friday night but that's why I can preach it uh, like I'm preaching it right now uh, because I've been there I've been raised in the church uh, on an apostolic pew uh, but yet I backslid by the age of 15 years old Uh, I started running the streets of Atlanta I was backslid for about 5 or 6 years I was messed up y'all I was filthy I was the scum of the earth Uh, I was so bad that people was leaving our church uh, because they said my dad as the pastor couldn't control his own home Uh, how can he rule our home Uh, They were telling my parents to excommunicate me from the church. Uh, I was messed up, y'all. I was smoking. Uh, I was drinking. I was going to clubs. Uh, I was gambling. I was stealing. Uh, I was doing all kind of mess. I got in trouble uh, with the law. I said it on Friday night. I was facing two felonies um, on my record at one time. One for arson uh, and the other for theft by received. Uh, I was messed up, y'all. I've had my license suspended in different states. Uh, I've been on probation in different states. Uh, I was on my way to hell uh, but about 11 years ago God gave me uh, another chain yeah my parents couldn't save me the UPC I couldn't save me uh, the government couldn't save me uh, my friends couldn't save me uh, there had to be a divine intervention uh, and that's when God came walking in my life uh, 11 years ago uh, he said give me everything you have uh, I said I don't have nothing but a bad reputation uh, I don't have nothing but junk uh, I don't have nothing but filth uh, God said I'll take that uh, give me everything you have uh, and I'll give you everything I have uh, I'll give you anointing. I'll give you ministry. I'll give you a family. I'll give you destiny. That's why I preach like I do. That's why I worship like I do. Because God made me evidence. You've come too late to tell me that God can't use anybody. You've come too late to tell me that God don't love me. I'm evidence. I'm evidence that it don't matter about your past. If you can just surrender your heart to God, he will use you for his glory. And I'm just wondering, is anybody else in here who got a testimony like me who can say, preacher, you're not the only one, but God has done a work in my life. He took alcohol out of my life. He took drugs out of my life. He took pornography out of my life. He made the difference. He made the difference. You got to have your own uh, personal testimony. You see, uh, evidence for me that there is a God uh, really isn't wrapped up into theology for me. Uh, it's really wrapped up into my personal uh, testimony. Yeah, I understand uh, what God did for the Ethiopian eunuch uh, in Acts 8. Yeah, I understand uh, what God did for Saul uh, who was changed into Paul in Acts 9. I understand uh, what God did for Cornelius in Acts chapter 10. I understand uh, what God did for John's disciples uh, in Acts 19 but I also know uh, what God did for Myron Wideman Jr. I know what he did for me personally Uh, you gotta have your own personal testimony uh, that nobody can take it away from you Uh, nobody can trip you up or try to deceive you uh, with some theological jargon or some religious rhetoric Uh, you gotta know without a shadow of a doubt Uh, I know what I know what I know Uh, I was messed up uh, and I was on my way to hell Uh, but then a man named Jesus uh, came walking into my neighborhood uh, and he picked me up y'all He turned me around and he placed my feet on solid ground. I know what I know for myself. 
I know what I know for myself. Uh, you see, that's the problem we have. Uh, that's the problem we have in modern church. Uh, it seems like folks get saved and folks uh, get delivered and folks get cleaned up. Uh, and now they want to act super saved. Uh, they want to act super holy. They want to act sanctimonious. Uh, they want to act all bougie and stuck up. Uh, like you ain't never made no mistakes. Uh, like you ain't never messed up. Uh, you are doing a disservice to yourself uh, and everybody that comes to the house of God. Uh, you got to be honest uh, and expose your wounds and say, yeah, I haven't been perfect my whole life. Uh, I haven't always dressed like this. Uh, I haven't always spoke like this. Uh, but the one day I had an experience uh, with a man who changed my life. Uh, you better never get to the place uh, where you get ungrateful. Uh, you get forgetful of everything that God uh, has done for your life. I'm evidence, I'm evidence that there is a God. I want to get to a place where I never forget what he has done for my life. I remember, I remember back home uh, in Atlanta, it was a Sunday. It was a Sunday service, y'all. And it was, if I could just go ahead and just be honest, it was a dead service, y'all. It was a dead service. I mean, it was dead, dead, dead. But there was this one sinner. There was this one backslider who, out of no, nowhere, just came and started worshiping, just start jumping and tearing up the church, y'all, in a good way. And I mean, I mean, just going for it, just going all the way in. And there was a lady standing in the back of our auditorium, and she said, "Brother Wideman Jr." She says, "Can you come here for a second? And I said, sure. She said, can I just tell you something? I said, yes. She said, oh, you see that gentleman down there worshiping and dancing and shouting? She said, do you know what he's been involved in? I said, well, I don't. Uh, I really don't have time to hear it. She says, if you really knew what he was involved in, then y'all would go down there and stop him from all that worshiping and all that dancing. I said, well, uh, I don't mean to be rude. I don't mean to be abrasive. I don't mean to even be crude. Uh, I said, but maybe God looked down in this dead service. Maybe he looked down in this dead service uh, and he said, I can't get no worship uh, from the perfect people like you. I, ho I hope that's okay. That's what I did in my church. My church. Not here. My church. He can't get no praise from the perfect people like you. So Jesus said, if I have to, I'll step over the perfect self-righteous folks uh, and I'll find me a sinner. I'll find me a backslider who may not have no home training. They may not have no etiquette, uh, but they just know their life is messed up. Uh, and I need something more than cigarettes can give me. I need something more than Jack Daniels can give me. I need something more uh, than marijuana can give me. Uh, I need a dose of the Holy Ghost. You better hear me in this house. Uh, you better hear me in this house. Uh, Jesus does not need uh, your worship. Uh, he does not need uh, my praise. Uh, he wants your worship. Uh, he wants your praise. Uh, but don't you ever get it twisted, honey. Uh, Jesus said if you want to keep your worship uh, and keep your praise to yourself, uh, that's your problem and prerogative. Uh, because I got angels around me. 24-7, uh, all they do is say holy, uh, holy. Holy, holy is the Lord God Almighty. They never have a headache. They never get their feelings hurt. They never have a bad day. They never wake up on the wrong side of the bed. All they do is say, holy, holy, holy is the Lord God Almighty. God said, keep your worship to yourself. If you don't want to cry out, I'll make those rocks cry out and give me praise. I'll blow the wind and make the trees start giving me praise. I'll get praise from the sun, the moon, and the stars uh, God said I'm gonna get praise from something no wonder he said let everything that has breath uh, he didn't say everybody uh, he said everything uh, he said I'm so powerful uh, I can get praise from humans uh, I can get praise from animals uh, I can get praise from all of creation but I don't know about you. 
I'm not gonna let a rock take my place. I said, I'm not gonna let a rock take my place. I'm not gonna let a tree take my place. I'm not gonna let a star take my place. He's been too good to me. I said, He's been too good to me. He's done too much for me for me to be silent. He's done too much for me For me to be silent You ought to open up your mouth You ought to open up your mouth And give him glory Come on, that's it, I feel the Holy Ghost in here You ought to open up your mouth And somebody ought to shout Jesus 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 I don't ever want to forget I don't ever want to forget uh, where he brought me from. Uh, and so many times I'm afraid. Uh, I'm afraid that some of us, uh, we come to church sometime and sometimes we don't mean it. Uh, but we do it without even realizing it. Uh, we have this demeanor as if to say, God, I'm doing you a favor just because I showed up in your house. Uh, and God scratches his head uh, and he says, no, you got it wrong. Uh, you're not doing me a favor. I'm doing you a favor. I could have killed you in your sin last night the death angel was trying to take some of you out uh, two weeks ago two years ago uh, 16 years ago uh, but God said my mercy uh, I feel like preaching in this house today uh, my grace uh, my blood uh, it covered you uh, it protected you uh, and gave you another opportunity uh, to come to my house uh, and this is the thanks I get uh, this is the appreciation I get you better give God some glory uh, and let the devil know uh, I'm evidence that God is. Somebody shout, I'm evidence, I'm evidence, I'm evidence. Uh, I'm evidence, I'm evidence, I'm evidence. Uh, I'm evidence, I'm evidence, I'm evidence. Uh, I'm evidence. There's somebody that's saying, preacher, I don't know all those Bible verses uh, like Bishop Libby. I don't know all those Bible verses uh, like Pastor Libby. Uh, I didn't graduate from Bible school or Bible college uh, like Pastor Libby. That's okay. Uh, do you have a personal testimony? How am ever did. I'm getting ready to close through here now. Am I good on time? I'm getting ready to close, I promise you now. You can remain seated, stand, and do whatever you want to do. There, there was a man by the name of Michael Newdow. Yeah, there was a man by the name of Michael Newdow. Anybody familiar with Michael Newdow? He filed, listen to me, he filed a litigation against the school district in California. This man, who is an attorney by education, a physician by occupation, uh, and an atheist by denomination, he filed a lawsuit uh, on behalf of his daughter who was in the public school system. Listen to me. Mr. Newdow's issue was, uh, he said, my daughter has to say the Pledge of Allegiance. He says, I don't like that because when my daughter says the Pledge of Allegiance, she has to say one nation under God. He felt that because church and state, God and government should be separated, and since this is a public school which was federally funded, why would you impose on my daughter to say one nation under God? If that was not enough, Mr. Newdow, he also fought to have in God we trust uh, taken off of our money. He also filed a lawsuit uh, to stop the invocation prayer at President Bush's second inauguration uh, and most recently he filed a lawsuit uh, to prevent references to God and religion from being a part uh, of President Obama's inauguration. He was asked one time, sir, why are you so adamant uh, about taking Jesus to trial uh, and trying to have him removed from everywhere? He replied, if Jesus is who organized religion says he is, then where is the evidence? And that question stood out to me. Where is the evidence? I wish they would have held his case here at CLC today. I understand. 
it might have not been legal. It might would have not really meant a lot. But I wish they would have held this case at CLC because if all he wants to see is evidence that there is a God, If all you want to see is evidence that there is a God, here we are. And I'm getting ready to close now. While defending or prosecuting, I told you, many things can be used as evidence. But the best evidence most of the time, listen to me, is not phone records. It's not even the murder weapon. It's not even DNA. But the best evidence you can have is a witness. And I do believe that there are some witnesses at CLC today that if the trial was here, you would let Mr. Newdow know I am evidence uh, that God is. Hold on. I'm Hold on, everybody stop moving. Hold on, hold on. I really can't decipher. There's a lot of moving going on. Hold on, I really can't decipher. I really cannot decipher in here the ones who are the evidence and the ones who are waiting to see some evidence. I need everybody to be seated, please. I need everybody to be seated, please, right to where you are. Everybody be seated, please, right to where you are because court is about to be in session. I need everybody seated. Everybody seated. Uh, court is about to be in session. Now, when I get to you, uh, you just acknowledge it. The first witness uh, I want to call to stand. We're going to have a mock trial. The first witness uh, I want to call to stand uh, are those who have had some ailments in your body. You've had some sicknesses. Uh, you've had some infirmities in your body. Uh, but Jesus said, with my stripes, uh, you are healed. If Jesus has ever but heal the old body I need you to stand and shout I'm evidence <laughs> exhibit A I'm evidence exhibit A the second witness uh, I want to call to stand are those of you uh, who have been broke before you've been down to nothing uh, you didn't know where your next meal was coming from uh, you had more bills than money uh, but Jesus said I shall supply uh, all of your needs according uh, to my riches in glory uh, if Jesus ever provided for you uh, when it seemed impossible uh, I need you to stand and shout uh, I'm evidence I'm evidence, I'm evidence, I'm evidence. Uh, that's exhibit B. Uh, that's exhibit B, the third witness. Uh, I want to call to stand. Now, uh, are those of you who should have lost your mind uh, because of all the stuff you've had to endure? Uh, you should have went crazy because of all the curveballs uh, that life has thrown your way. Uh, but Jesus said, uh, I feel like preaching a little bit now. Uh, I will keep your mind uh, in perfect peace. Uh, if Jesus ever kept you uh, when you were struggling with depression uh, you were struggling with anxiety uh, you were struggling with suicidal thoughts uh, you felt like you were getting ready to lose your mind uh, I need you to stand up and shout uh, I'm evidence yeah yeah I'm evidence uh, I'm evidence, I'm evidence. Uh, that was exhibit C. Uh, exhibit D now, the fourth witness. Uh, I want to call to stand. Now, uh, uh, those of you who had some enemies in your life, uh, you've had some haters in your life, uh, you've had some foes in your life, uh, you've had some adversaries in your life, uh, you've had some folk that tried to kill you. Uh, but Jesus said, uh, no weapon that is formed against you, uh, God help me in here, uh, shall be able to prosper. And every tongue that rise up against you uh, in judgment shall be condemned. Uh, this is the heritage uh, of the saints. Uh, you want to stand up and shout. Uh, I'm evidence. I'm 
evidence, I'm evidence. I'm evidence. I feel the spirit of the living God in this house. I'm evidence, I'm evidence. I'm evidence. The fifth and the final witness. The fifth and the final witness. I want to call to stand. Of those of you who have repented of your sins, you've been baptized in Jesus' name. You received the gift of the Holy Ghost with the evidence of speaking in tongues. Because Jesus said, except the man be born again of the water and the spirit, he cannot enter or even see the kingdom of heaven. If you've ever been to the water, honey, and you've been baptized and you spoke in tongues when the Holy Ghost came, I need you to lose your mind right now and shout, I'm evidence, 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 I'm evidence. somebody in here uh, who needs to see some evidence uh, you ought to get out of the aisles and high five three people uh, you ought to high five three people uh, and say I'm evidence uh, I'm evidence let's have church uh, I'm evidence I'm evidence uh, you ought to high five three more people uh, you ought to hug somebody uh, and say I'm evidence uh, I'm evidence uh, I'm evidence uh, that he'll make a way uh, no way I'm evidence that weeping may endure for a night but joy is coming in the morning I'm evidence that he'll make a way out of no way I'm evidence I'm evidence that he may not come when you want him to but he's always on time I'm evidence that if any man be in Christ he is a new creature all old things are passed away I'm evidence I'm evidence that I once was young, but now I'm old. I've never seen the righteous forsaken. I'm ever dead. 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 Everybody standing all across the house. I'm evidence. this house everybody standing right now hands are raised hearts are praying altar workers prayer partners are already here ready to pray maybe there's somebody in this room right now the sound of my voice is battling a physical ailment come out of your seat right now battling a financial issue come out of your seat right now battling a mental and emotional problem come out of your seat right now please you're battling an enemy that you feel is trying to break you and trying to destroy you come out of your seat right now please you got a spiritual need you never received the Holy Ghost never been baptized in Jesus name please please I beseech you I behoove you please come please come out of your seat there are people down here who are evidence that whatever you need God can do it for you you see evidence all sprinkled throughout this crowd uh, that God has did for them exactly what you need. I need you to come. I need you to come. Prayer partners, begin to move right now. Begin to move right now if you can. Every altar worker, begin to move right now. Come as close as you can. Come as close as you can. Come. 
That's it. Come, come, come. The Holy Ghost is already falling in this house. Come, come, come. Every altar worker begin to move right now. Every prayer partner begin to move out right now in the name of Jesus. Uh, come on, that's it. Whatever you have need of in this house, uh, God is going to give you your own testimony. Uh, he's going to make you evidence. Come on, that's it. 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 Come on. Come on, let's turn this into a house of prayer right now. A house of prayer all over the house all over the house whatever you have need of come on your marriage is on the rocks your marriage is messed up come on there's divorce papers on the table come on you're sleeping in separate bedrooms come on god get turning around come on i don't care if you got cancer in your body i don't even care if you got hiv i've seen god heal hiv before i don't care what disease you have but god can make you evidence Come on, that's it. Some of you struggle with depression. Come on, some of you got to take pills to go to sleep. Some of you got to drink alcohol just to ease your pain. Come on, let God deliver you today. Let God change you. Come on, that's it. I've never been baptized before in Jesus' name. I want that experience. I want that experience. I've never spoken in tongues before. I want that experience. I want it. Make me evidence, God. Make me evidence. Make me evidence. Come on, that's it. From the left to the right. From the left to the right. Everybody praying. Everybody praying. Everybody praying. Come on, that's it. The power of the Lord is in this house. Come on, that's it. Come on. Come on, every intercessor right now. Every intercessor. Every altar worker right now. Every prayer warrior. Every prayer partner right now. I need you to go deep. I need you to go deep. I need you to go deep right now in the name of Jesus. Come on, that's it. 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 Come on, you got to have crazy faith. You got to have crazy faith uh, that Jesus can do exceeding abundantly above all that you can think of ask. Uh, I don't care how bad it is. Uh, I don't care how big it is. Uh, come on, God can do it. God can do it. Uh, he can do it. Yes, he can. He can do it. I'm evidence. I'm evidence. I'm evidence. Uh, I'm evidence. I'm evidence. Let him make you evidence. Let him make you evidence. Let him give you your testimony today. You got to go after it. You got to go after it. You can't spectate. You can't stand around and gaze. You got to go after it. You got to go after him. You got to reach for him. Fix it, Jesus. Fix it, Jesus. Fix it, Jesus. Whatever's wrong, make it right. Whatever's broke, fix it. Whatever crooked, make it straight. Make me evidence. Give me my own testimony. I'm tired of watching everybody else. I'm tired of hearing everybody else's testimony. I want to experience you for myself. I want to feel you for myself. That's it, 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 that's it. Come on, there's a sweet spirit in this house. Come on, there's a sweet spirit of the Holy Ghost. It's in this house, it's in this house. It's flowing right now. Young people are getting touched. Young married couples are getting touched. Elders are getting touched right now. Come on. Backsliders are praying through. Come on, backslider. Sinners are praying through. Sinners are. Come on, rap hey 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 come on come on come on there it is there it is come on come on there it is there it is come on there it is there it is come on that's it people are reaching people are reaching people are reaching for God people are reaching for God come on come on pray 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 like your life depends on it pray like your